is described as being Bridgerton meets Howl's Moving Castle. Two of my favorite things in the entire world. Hopefully one day I'll get to go there, but for now, I have to read it in books. <laughs> I definitely know that poems can sometimes take a lot of analyzing and sometimes I don't always want to do that. <laughs> it is one of the cutest television series I've ever seen. Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin. If you haven't been here before, welcome or welcome back if you have. I'm so glad you're here because I thought I would share some of the books that I'm going to be reading this spring and summer. I know for a lot of us, we're on our way to the summer season. I personally have just been loving the springtime recently. I feel like now here in Colorado, we are in the prime spring season and I'm loving it. So a lot of these books have some sort of spring influence, but also I wanted to add some that felt summary as well. But before we get too far into the video, this video is sponsored by Book of the Month. Thank you once again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. I always love working with Book of the Month. They are by far one of my favorite companies ever. <laughs> Those of you that don't know what Book of the Month is, it is a super popular and fast growing book service for readers like you and I. Their main mission is to promote new and emerging authors as well as help readers find books that they'll love. If you're wondering how it works, their team goes through hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles. This allows you to spend more time reading and less time researching. They also have an amazing skip policy. You can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. Plus, they have the best price for new hardcover fiction books. You can get your first book for only $9.99 using the code GOMAY. My absolute favorite thing about Book of the Month is their choices in books. They have such a wide selection of genres, as well as authors, I just absolutely love their book selections and every single month I always see at least one or two that I'm really excited to pick up. There are a few this month that I am very excited for, the first being Darling Girl. This is a Peter Pan retelling. This particular book focuses on Holly Darling, who is the granddaughter of Wendy Darling. Most of you probably know that I am a huge fan of Peter Pan, so whenever there's a new retelling that comes out, I always want to pick it up. I am so excited that they included a Peter Pan retelling in their selection. So yes, very excited about that one. I also wanted to share the add-on that they have for this month because I am pumped about it. I love Holly Black, as most of you probably know. I'm a big fan. So her newest book is an add-on for this month as well, if you want to pick it up. It's about a low-level con artist named Charlie, and she is forced into the hero position when she has to face her old foe. If you would like to pick up any of these selections, I have the link for the book of the month down below in the description, and you can use the code GOMAY to get your first book for only $9.99. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into my spring and summer reading list. I hope this spring has been treating you guys well. It's definitely been crazy busy for me and also we've been kind of having to deal with some personal family issues that are not fun. But it has to do with my dog Hubert. A lot of you probably know him. He's a sweet, amazing little guy but we've been having some struggles with him. So it's been a bit of a stressful season, definitely more stressful than I would hope for, but we're doing the best that we can. So if you could send some like good vibes towards Hubert's way, towards our family's way, we would appreciate it very much. <laughs> but because we've been going through a little bit of a hard time, I tried to pick up a bunch of books that have a wide variety of themes and genres. So depending on how I'm feeling, I have a book that can fit with that. So so I do have two sad books in here, but I also tried to put a lot of hopeful, happy books in here as well. I have a total of 12 books and I'm hoping to get through these throughout the spring and summer months. We'll see, crossing my fingers. A lot of these are actually picks that I got from Instagram. I asked a few months ago for some book recommendations that are very springy and a lot of you came through with some amazing recommendations. So I do have a few of these in here. If you're interested in following me on Instagram, I will have that link down below as well in case you're interested. But let's get into the two books that I'm actually currently reading. Both of them are sad and it wasn't intentional that I picked up these books. I don't really know why. This first one I picked up a few months ago and I have not finished, 
mostly because I know that it's gonna be a difficult one for me. So <laughs> I've been kind of putting it off because I don't want to cry too much. I'm about halfway through it and I haven't gotten to any of the like really, really difficult parts. There has been one scene in here with Lily's mother. For those of you that don't know, this book tackles the topic of abuse. And so it's a really difficult book to read. I actually did not know that going into this book. I had heard that it was a sad book and that it would make you cry but I did not realize what that meant exactly. <laughs> I did figure it out pretty soon after picking it up, so it's on me for continuing to read this. I will eventually finish it. I just wanna be in a place where I'm not gonna totally fall apart by reading this book, so I'm giving it a little time. <laughs> I'm gonna read some happy books before I finish this one. The next one I am also currently reading and is another sad book, and it is You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This is about 17-year-old Julie, and her boyfriend recently passed away. They had planned on a future together. They were going to move to the city and go to college together, but he tragically passes away. So she's left to struggle with this grief and kind of figure out what she wants to do with her future. Her way of coping with this grief is by completely trying to erase him from her life. So she decides to get rid of all of the things that he gave her and just do everything that she can to forget him. But she finds a message in her yearbook that makes her want to give Sam a call one more time just to listen to his voice message. And so she calls him and he actually ends up picking up the phone. I'm also halfway through this one and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a super short read, another pretty sad read as well. And this story takes place during cherry blossom season, so it's a beautiful scenery. Okay, let's go into a little bit of lighter books. Most of these others are definitely lighter. <laughs> so let's go into the memoir that I have, which is How to Be a Good Creature by Cy Montgomery. I'm not usually drawn to memoirs. I don't really know why. Nonfiction is really difficult for me to read. I've talked about it before, but books to me are the ultimate form of escapism, so I don't really like to pick up too many nonfiction books. I say that as I'm reading two really sad books. I don't know. I don't know. But this one seemed so fun and cute. It's really short and each chapter is named after an animal that the author, Sia Montgomery, has met. She is a naturalist and an adventurer and loves animals, which is the main reason that I wanted to pick this up is because I love animals so much. And I loved how she formatted the book with each chapter being an animal that she had met and made an impact on her. So we have Christopher Hogwood, which is a pig that she made friends with, and Octavia, who is an octopus, and they have really cute little illustrations in here as well. At the end of the book, it also has some photographs of her with these animals that were talked about in the book. The author just seemed like someone that I would want to be friends with, so that was definitely my main motivation for picking this one up. It also explores themes like the difference between animals and humans, as well as the similarities that we have to them, the various ways that we learn to love and become more empathetic, as well as topics like grief and loss and things like that as well. It just sounds like such a sweet little book, and I absolutely love this cover so yeah one of my goals every year is to pick up one classic of course i would love to pick up more so definitely want to pick up more if i can but i decided to pick up more of a springtime classic so the book that i chose is anne of green gables from what i know it is about anne who is an orphan and she is adopted by a sister and brother who live in green gables and this is the story of how she grows a home for the first time in her life and the struggles that come with that as well as the good things that come with it I just also realized that i have two authors that have the last name montgomery so that's kind of cool <laughs> it's kind of a unique last name okay the next book i have is a fantasy book but it is described as being bridgerton meets howl's moving castle two of my favorite things in the entire world and it's called half a soul this takes place in the regency era during the london season so the main character theodora is cursed by a fairy because of this curse she has no sense of fear or embarrassment which makes her prone to scandal and for those of you who've watched bridgerton Scandal is a big part of London season. But this year, Theodora is determined to stay quiet and not cause any upset so that her cousin can find a husband. But then, Lord Sorcerer of England finds out about Theodora's curse and he brings her into the world of fairies and magicians. After season two of Bridgerton ended, I was so sad. And so when I heard about this book, I knew that I wanted to pick it up. Okay, the next one I have is a cozy mystery called Shady Hollow. This is the first book in a series as well, and it takes place in 
a small village called Shady Hollow. <laughs> this is a place where woodland creatures live together in harmony until one day a toad is found dead. Reporter Bear Vixen, who is a cute little fox, catches wind that this might be a murder, so she decides she's going to investigate. And while investigating, she unearths some major secrets of Shady Hollow. This book sounded so much like Fantastic Mr. Fox, and I'm a huge fan of that movie, so I was instantly drawn to it. It just seems like such a quirky, fun book and really reminded me of Wes Anderson's movies, so instantly made me want to pick this one up. Next one I have was one of the ones that was recommended to me on Instagram, and it is The Murmur of Bees. This book takes place during the Mexican Revolution and focuses on the story of a boy who was found underneath a bridge covered in a blanket of bees. Because of his disfigurement and the way that he was found, a lot of the locals of the village think that he has been kissed by the devil. But he does find a home with local landowners who become his adopted parents. As he grows up, he starts to have these strange magical gifts, and one of them is that he's able to control a swarm of bees. The other is that he has visions of the future, which are both beautiful and terrifying. So this captures not only the fate of a country, but also one of the families living in it. Okay, the next one I have is definitely more of a summer book, and it's one of my best friend Lexi, who most of you probably know, Alexander Rosalind. <laughs> it's one of her favorite books, and I've talked about it before, but I think it's so special when you can pick up your favorite people's favorite books. I think people's favorite books say a lot about who they are as a person and what they value. So I knew that I wanted to pick this one up this year and it is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. Because this is one of Lexi's favorite books, I actually don't know a lot about what it's about. I know that it's a young adult, contemporary, sapphic, magical realism type of book, but that's all that I know and also that it takes place during summer. It's another really short book. As you can see, most of these books that I've chosen are ones that I can get through pretty quickly because I'm trying to read more this year and one of my issues is that I love long books. I just I love long, beefy books, so I'm really trying to pick more books that are a little shorter so I can get through them quicker. But yes, very excited to finally read this one. Okay, the next one I have is one that I talked about recently in my book haul video, and it is Garden Spells. When I read this plot, I instantly knew that this was going to be a book that I wanted to pick up. And after talking about it in that video, I had a ton of comments talking about how amazing that this book was. It's the perfect spring cottagecore witchy vibe book. This is about a family called the Waverleys, who are witches, and they have been taking care of a garden that has magical plants in it for generations. One of the plants that they're known for is this apple tree that produces prophetic fruit. They also have tons of flowers and herbs that are imbued with magical powers. This book focuses on the three remaining members of the Waverly family. One of them is a caterer, her name is Claire, and she uses a lot of these herbs and fruits in her garden to make the food that she caters with, which just sounds like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> it also includes her elderly cousin as well as her rebellious sister who disappeared years ago. It sounds like such a charming book and definitely one that I think I'll be picking up next. Okay, the next one I have, I'm just so excited for. It is volume two of Heartstopper. I read the first one years ago at this point and loved it. Since the TV series came out on Netflix, it goes into the first two Heartstopper books. I watched the first four episodes and saw that that was the ending of the first book, so I decided decided to order this one and I'm gonna pick it up really soon so that I can finish the first season of Heartstopper. It is one of the cutest television series I've ever seen. I loved how much inspiration that they actually took from the graphic novel series and it has little illustrations throughout some of the shots. It just has beautiful cinematography and such a cute story in it as well. So yeah, very excited to continue with this series. It's just adorable. Okay, the next one is kind of a different genre for me and it is co a collection of poems called The Wild Iris. As you can see, it is the winner of a Nobel Prize, which is definitely a perk, but honestly the main reason that I picked this one up is because it really seemed very summery and springy. All of the poems are named after plants, so I thought it would be a really good book to add to my list. I have always been into epic poems like the Iliad and the Odyssey and Beowulf wolf but I've never been into short form poetry like this before 
So I'm excited to read it. Hopefully I'll like it. I definitely know that poems can sometimes take a lot of analyzing and sometimes I don't always want to do that. <laughs> but I also loved the themes of this book. It encompasses the human, natural, and spiritual realms. The main purpose of these poems was to question, explore, and finally celebrate what it means to be alive. Definitely some deep topics, but I think that I could get a lot out of it. The last one that I have is Sweet Bean Paste, and this was another one that was recommended to me on Instagram. This is about Centaro, who has failed in life. He has a criminal record, he drinks too much, and his dream of becoming a writer is now a distant memory. He works in a confectionery shop, and there he meets an elderly woman with a troubled past as well named Tokyo. Tokyo makes the best bean paste that Centaro has ever tasted, and she decides she's going to teach him how to make this bean paste, and so they form a friendship over this. As they form this friendship, Tokyo's secrets are revealed with devastating consequences. It also takes place during cherry blossom season, which is one of the reasons that I was so excited to pick this one up as well. It is one of my goals in life to go somewhere that has cherry blossom season because here in Colorado, we do not have that. And it makes me very sad. So hopefully one day I'll get to go there. But for now, I have to read it in books. <laughs> Here are the 12 books I'm planning on reading this spring and summer season. It's definitely a lot, but as you can tell, a lot of them are pretty short. I think the longest one I have is The Murmur of Bees and Anne of Green Gables. So I think I can do it. And I'm honestly just so excited to explore some of these genres. A lot of these books are unlike any books that I've ever read before. And that's exactly what I wanted for this spring and summer season. So you guys will have to let me know what you're reading this spring and summer. And if there's any books in here that you've read, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. But that is all for right now. I'm definitely planning on doing more vlogging soon after we get everything sorted with Hubert and figure out what we're doing. Hopefully there'll be more content. We just have to play it by ear for right now. But thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for keeping Hubert and my little family in your prayers. We appreciate it so much, but I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.